We're back to the Grizzly Project. The weather has given us a little bit of a break. It's only about 80 degrees out here right now, and in the shade it's feeling pretty nice. So what I'd like to do is get to work uh, building a new foundation for the Grizzly. Uh, in case it's the first video you're watching, uh, I decided with our old Grizzly over here to just kind of retire it. It's got so many bent and mangled screws, a lot of the boards are cracked or fractured. The design was more of a validation than it was kind of a final product. And we went through a couple patches just to get jobs done, to get certain projects done because we had equipment rented. But we're kind of gearing up to start the foundation of our house and uh, we want to filter all that soil. A friend of ours, a neighbor, Richard, came over with his tractor and he was willing to filter the soil and we got to looking at the grizzly and said, she's done. It's over. Time to start new. So, spend a little bit of time and use the sawmill, cut some lumber, use some lumber we already had. And we've this time used nails to build the deck. We're 16 on center with our joist and we're also 16 on center with all of our blocking. Everything is two by six. In the other Grizzly, we had a mixture of two by six and two by four. And finally, we've actually added uh, joist hangers and now we need to build the frame that the deck is going to sit on and I've got a few ideas uh, about how to make that deck even better. Our first iteration of Grizzly, this is the deck here, was actually sitting on the ground. And we always had this problem where the rocks would start to accumulate and it would start to weigh it down. Of course, getting those rocks off there without damaging the Grizzly was pretty hard. So in Grizzly 2.0, we actually added legs to the front and raised the front off the ground uh, two feet. And that also, uh, and we also raised the back two feet. That actually gave us a steeper grizzly, which was great because the rocks rolled off much quicker, but there was no loss of soil. Everything was great there. And then you had this area in front where rocks could accumulate for a little while before they started to pile up on the grizzly. Unfortunately, we had to move the grizzly a lot because we didn't have a way to remove the soil from the back side using a tractor. So you get all these rocks that are piled up over here on the front, and then you'd hook up a chain and try to lift this out, and in so doing, a lot of damage happened in this lower area. So what we're going to do this time with our, our uh, frame or foundation here is we're going to use bracing in the back. We're gonna leave this bottom area open so we can drive in with the bucket. So what we're thinking is that this is probably going to be a kind of framed piece and we're going to use plywood as sheathing and that plywood will give us a lot of kind of shear resistance or um, racking resistance. But in order to keep the soil from just wanting to blow out the front here as you push it with the bucket, we want to create a box inside. And so this is the front and we're going to do the same thing. We're actually going to build a kind of truss inside there and we're gonna line it with plywood. So this plywood will actually be on the inside. The same thing here with the side view, this plywood will be on the inside. With the first Grizzly, I didn't do a lot of engineering. I just kind of threw together some stuff and thought we would just see if it worked. It worked and away we went. And that's a lot of that's history. With this one, I'm not, I'm not really doing engineering, but I'm doing a lot more kind of calculating. And I'll have to say that after our timber frame workshop, I have a, a much finer appreciation for for accurate measuring and accurate cutting. It's not that I didn't respect that stuff in the past, I guess I just didn't quite understand how important it was because we really haven't built a lot of stuff. Um, but the stuff we've built, we've paid for the inaccuracies and inconsistencies. So this time I'm gonna be doing more math and try to cut these pieces to a particular plan instead of kind of put this together, put this together, measure it, see if it fits. Not promising that's how it's gonna work out, but let's try it. We want this lower portion here to be two feet. And because we're gonna to have to probably use two sheets of plywood, we might as well make this two feet up here also. We know that the measurement from the um, large bolt from the top portion here to the bolt on the lower portion here is 82 inches. And we know that this dimension over here, we want from the top of this wall to where this eye bolt enters to be, that's 72 inches minus four, so that's 68 inches because the bolt is four inches recessed from the top and we have a two foot wall here. So what we're trying to solve for is how long is this wall? I went and did a couple double checks and it turns out our eye bolts are three inches recessed from the top, so our side height is actually 69 inches. 
we can solve for this third side here because this is a right triangle. And Pythagorean theorem says that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So what we're gonna do is square 82 and square 69. We're gonna subtract this from this and that would give us 1963. All we have to do is get the square root of 1963 and that will give us the length of our third side. Now this is a little tricky because that's 44 inches from the center of that bolt to the center of that bolt which are both centered on the post. So in order to find the inside dimension, we need to subtract half of the width of the post from each side. So we'll subtract three and a half inches, which means that our inside wall should be 40 and a half inches right here. As we get closer to building our house, I'm becoming more and more of a fan of having a set of plans because it removes a lot of confusion. Now. This project is fairly small in scope, and so I'm applying all these theories to this project, and I'm gonna have fun building it. But if I screw it up, it's not that big of a deal. But it really helps me to look at a set of plans and scrutinize them, something like our house plans, and start to look for problems, things that won't work, uh, miscalculations, stuff like that. So this will be interesting to see. We just did it on paper, so let's build it and see if it'll work. I think I can use a lot of this scrap wood that we pulled off the other Grizzly, but as a last resort, we've got some fresh two by fours over at the sawmill. So we're gonna build our little knee walls, we'll call them, out of this stuff. All right, perfect. So these will be our sides. And I gotta tell you, my gut says that the math is wrong, but I'm gonna trust the math and see how this comes out. So we need to cut our front legs, which will be two feet and then four inches of relish and our bolt will actually go through right here at the two foot mark. Oh, I forgot to mention before I get too far, the way I made these so darn quick is it dawned on me that in our storage unit, we have a pneumatic nailer or a nail gun. I totally forgot. So gosh, it's been almost two months. It was two months ago now we made a massive score on tools. If you haven't seen that video, we'll link to it over here. We had been keeping in touch with a gentleman for over a year who was getting older and he needed to sell his property. And he had built a home just like Alyssa and I are doing, but 40 years ago. And he had all these tools because he did all the work himself. I think he hired a couple people, but generally speaking, he actually did the work. So when he says he built his house, what he doesn't mean is he paid a contractor to build it. Now that he's moving on, he needs to sell the home. He wants to be closer to his kids, which was perfect for us. Mm -hmm. So the moral of that story is be patient. And one of the gold mine tools that we picked up was the nail gun. So after I Spent a little time kind of chewing through a bunch of my dad's accumulated 16 penny nails. I thought, this is way too much work. Let me grab the nail gun. I think if there's one thing this journey has taught us, it's the power of good tools. Timber framing workshop taught us the same thing. We got to do a lot of things by hand, just like how I nailed this by hand. I didn't cut that by hand, thank you goodness <laughs> thank goodness for our dewalt chop saw we did do an unboxing on that if you're curious great saw love it anyway we've learned the value of really good tools the challenge that we've seen is that it takes thousands of dollars of tools to build things quality you can do it slow which we have been doing that entire deck was built with i think maybe three power tools but here i am starting to use more and more this is looking good. I decided to put screws to hold this to the legs just in case the math was wrong. And I did just take a measurement from there to there and the math is spot on. I just don't remember this being that steep on our previous Grizzly. And I don't think it was because we didn't use math to build it. We just kind of eyeballed it, you know. Eh. So we're gonna trust the math and it's gonna give us a little bend down here that's about four feet by eight feet. So now we need to build the front section. So let's do some more measuring and then we'll get the front built. Kind of laid that support there on the deck. I guess I kind of just want to tilt it up and I want to look at it because what, what's got me hung up is this front piece right here is only going to be about 12 inches tall. I'm working in the constraints of an eight foot riser. This one right here. I can't raise it any higher without 
change in the geometry of the, the grizzly. We want the grizzly to be steep. I just don't want it to be too steep. And I also don't want the refines box to be too small so you can't get a backhoe bucket in there. That's kind of what I was worried about. It's awfully steep. I guess what I'm realizing is that on our old grizzly that the 82 inch mark, which is what we, I use this measurement. I took this off our old grizzly and I knew this measurement because I was able to calculate that based on the two foot knee wall. And on a right triangle, that's the exact measurement. I have a hunch that on our old Grizzly, this wasn't a right triangle. I think this leg was a little bit long. And so this angle wasn't actually correct mathematically. In order to make 82 inches work, we would have to raise this up and come out. I can either sit back and do some more math or we can move ahead and give this a try and see if it actually will work pretty well. I know from experience that when you drop soil in here it definitely comes right through but what I don't know is what effect these blocks will have because if you look if you kind of think of this like a vertical space the amount of vertical space between these blocks is very narrow. And so this may actually be too steep to work. So back to the drawing board a little bit. I spent a little time thinking about it at, oh, 55 degrees. I think this is too steep. What I cho chose to do was to go one foot off of this wall here higher. So we had this at two feet and I changed this height for my triangle here to three feet. And when I did my um, my Pythagorean theorem, I came up with 58 and 15 sixteenths or approximately 59 inches. Since our current wall is already 40.5 inches, I'm just going to add a 15 inch piece to that wall and that will bring us out. And then what we'll need to do is actually attach a new front leg that is three feet tall, not two. And that should put us really close to a 45 degree angle. And I feel really, really pretty good at 45 degrees. As you can see, we're losing daylight. So <clears throat> despite my best efforts, I wasn't able to complete this project today, but I did get our extensions on there. I've got the the legs over there ready to cut, but we're running out of daylight. Twilight's an amazing thing here, but it gets to the point where we can't shoot. And uh, well, I'm gonna assume you guys wanna watch the end of this project. So unfortunately our schedule for the next two to three days is booked up. So time to clean, clean up, put all the stuff away. We'll have to set this to the side. And uh, when we resume, we'll pick back up with the legs and the front. Well, I'm super happy that the Grizzly project took me a little longer than uh, I wanted, I guess. Uh, partly because our backhoe showed up today. And something I, I knew I wanted to factor into the equation was the width of our bucket. I'm assuming that by the time you watch this video, we'll have published our video about the backhoe. So if you have a lot of questions about the backhoe, look for that video. We'll link to that guy over here. Anyway, let's take a measurement off the bucket. Hey, that's really good news. So the bucket is 81 inches wide. So if you remember, these are the corners here that the legs are gonna go on. So these will be the front legs and I think those will be the rear legs. So we need the measurement off the inside there. All right, so we are 96 inches inside to inside. And then we're framing these small panels on the inside. So we're gonna take seven inches off the total width, which puts us at 89 inches. But then we're gonna have three quarter inch plywood probably on the inside there. So we're gonna take another inch and a half. So about 87 and a half inches. So I'm starting to think that maybe I ought to recess the panels, the plywood panels inside, at least on the sides. That give me just another inch and a half. At 81 inches on the bucket, and I believe we had 87 and a half. That only gives you about three inches on the sides. That's actually good because that doesn't give the soil anywhere to fall off, if you know what I mean. Like it's a pretty tight little space. So I don't know. I think we're gonna try it. We're gonna push our luck. We'll put the, the sides right where they go uh, in line with the legs. And then we'll put our plywood on the inside of that. And then we'll, we'll just run the backhoe in there and we'll see if it'll pick up dirt or not. So we did a quick test fit and uh, 
I think I'm gonna go ahead and secure these panels to the sides. So I've gotta get that plywood ripped down to two foot strips and secured here and here. And then I need to do, I need to finish cutting the front and building that frame. I'd say it's working pretty good, but I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty tight with that bucket. You're not gonna really get away with trying to swing in. You're gonna have to be able to drive straight into the Grizzly. I feel like this video is taking a long time. So, guess what? I think I'm gonna go with part three on this guy. Video number three, we gotta get the front board that'll complete this kind of bin area. And then we need to drill and mount the deck. And I guess before we do that, we've got to attach the uh, filter screen which in this case is I think 11 gauge chain link fence there's a slim chance I'll get to that tomorrow morning hope you're having fun with this one I'm actually kind of having fun with this it feels like it's going a little bit slow uh, just because of the chaos of everything right now but I have to say and I, and I meant to mention this about five times this Grizzly has probably saved us over a thousand dollars in soil because we have so much rock that the stuff we have here really isn't that great for strategic backfill. And since we're gonna be starting the excavation for the house very soon, we'd like to filter most of that soil. And that means that we should be able to reuse a lot of that for the fill after a lot of the footings and everything are dug and built. But without the Grizzly, we'd have to buy soil, which for us, a good load of soil is running about $180, including trucking. I'll see you on the next episode.